Hi guys, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video we'll be discussing the Pediatric Advanced Life Support or PALS cardiac arrest algorithm, specifically focusing on the shockable component. So we'll be reviewing ventricular fibrillation and pulseless ventricular tachycardia. So let's jump straight in. Here we go. In contrast to adult cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest in infants and children usually results from progressive respiratory failure or shock rather than a primary cardiac cause. The hypoxic or asphyxial arrest occurs most often in infants and young children, especially those with underlying disease. It is important to identify and treat respiratory distress, respiratory failure and shock before progression to cardiopulmonary failure and cardiac arrest. Early identification and treatment are crucial to saving the lives of seriously ill or injured children. Sudden cardiac arrest from ventricular arrhythmia occurs in about 5-15% to of all pediatric in-hospital and out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Although a shockable rhythm like VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia is the presenting rhythm in only about 14% of pediatric cardiac arrest cases, it is present in about 27% of such arrests at some point during the resuscitation. The incidence of cardiac arrest from VF or pulseless VT increases with age and should be suspected in any patient with sudden collapse. Increasing evidence suggests that sudden unexpected death in young people is often associated with underlying cardiac conditions. Despite the improved outcome of in-hospital CPR, most children with in-hospital cardiac arrest and even a larger percentage of children with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest do not survive or survive with significant neurological impairment. Because outcome from cardiac arrest is so poor, focus on preventing cardiac arrest is of utmost importance. So let's jump straight into this. So as always, we'll start off with our BLS assessment. Tap and shout, hey, 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 are you okay? Check breathing, check pulse, 5 up to 10 seconds. If you cannot find breathing or detect a pulse, immediately activate the code BLUE or call your local emergency medical services number. Start high quality CPR. Get a defibrillator on because we want to hunt for VS or pulseless VTAC. If the rhythm is VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, immediately we will deliver our first shock and we'll be using two joules per kilogram. Also, always consider the recommendations from the manufacturer. Immediately after your defibrillation, resume high quality CPR, meaning pushing hard, pushing fast, at a rate of 100 to 120 pushes per minute. Remembering to allow full chest recoil. Don't interrupt CPR for longer than 10 seconds, and you want to give breaths just enough to see visible chest rise. The depth of compression should be one third of your anterior posterior chest. Keep in mind, during single rescuer CPR, the compression to ventilation ratio is 30 to 2, and for two or more rescuers, it's 15 to 2. As we are moving on, Get an IV in or an IO access. If neither IV or IO access is available for medication delivery, think about your endotracheal route as the third option. The typical ET dose will be two to three times that of the IV IO dose. 
Start thinking about the first medication that we'll need to give. Constantly ensure high quality CPR. And after two minutes, stop, switch, and analyze the rhythm. If the rhythm is still VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, we'll deliver our second shock at four joules per kilogram and immediately again start with high quality chest compressions. At this point, we are ready to give our first medications, which is epinephrine. Our dose is 0.01 milligrams per kilogram IV, 0.1 ml per kilogram of the 0.1 milligrams per mil, which is 1 in 10,000. And we can repeat this dose every three to five minutes. If it's not done at this point, we can consider an advanced airway. If we use the advanced airway, don't forget waveform capnography because it measures the quality of CPR and we can make sure that we have good ventilations and start thinking about your next medications. After two minutes, stop, switch, analyze. If the rhythm is still VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, this time we'll deliver a third shock at four joules per kilogram. We can also consider going up to a maximum of 10 joules per kilogram or use the adult dose. After the defibrillation, resume high quality CPR and we're ready to give our next medication, which is either amiodarone, and the dose is five milligrams per kilogram, IV push, or lidocaine at one milligram per kilogram IV push. We should also consider our reversible causes or our H's and T's. So our five H's, hypoxia, hydrogen ion acidosis, hypothermia, hyper and hypokalemia, and hypovolemia. Our T's, tension pneumothorax, thrombosis pulmonary, thrombosis coronary, cardiac tamponade, and then we should also think about tablets, drugs, medications. Again, we can start thinking about our next medication. Make sure we're monitoring the quality of your CPR. And now we can deliver our fourth shock. Again, we'll be using four joules per kilogram or a maximum of 10 joules per kilogram and immediately resume high quality CPR. And we'll go straight to our next medication, which is epinephrine. Again, 0.1 ml per kilogram of the 0.1 milligrams per mole concentration. We can start thinking about our next medication as well. Start preparing the next medication and always monitor high quality CPR. After two minutes, we'll stop, we'll switch, we'll analyze. If the rhythm is still VF or pulseless VT, we'll deliver another shock and immediately resume high quality CPR. And at this point, we can give either again amiodarone or lidocaine. So we followed this method. We deliver shock one, we deliver shock two, and we gave epinephrine. After shock three, we gave amiodarone. We gave shock four, epi, and after shock five, amiodarone. So all the equal number of shocks was followed by epinephrine, while the uneven number of shocks, shock three, and shock five was followed by amiodarone. And you can follow this pattern as long as the rhythm did not change. When following this pattern, it's going to mean you're going to give one epinephrine every four minutes, and you'll be giving one amiodarone every four minutes. If you benefited from the video, kindly like, subscribe and smash that notification bell. We'll see you in our next PALS video. Have a fantastic day.